Hi guys, it's Kirsty. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about the attitude that's helpful to take when working on recovery. Um, and by that, I mean kind of several attitudes, um, you know, kind of a bit of an idea of um, tips about mindset to take on that can be helpful for us when we're working on our OCD recovery so that we can hopefully avoid some of the potential pitfalls um, that we might come across in our recovery journey. But before I go into that, I'd like to ask, please firstly do like this video if you do like it. Um, and if there are any other videos that you'd like to see on this channel, please do comment below in the comments section and just let us know if you've got anything that you would like us to cover and we can see what we can do. And lastly, if you haven't already, please do subscribe by clicking on the subscribe button below so you can stay up to date with the new videos as they come out. So um, this is an important video to do because um, a big part of recovery is kind of our mindset towards it. I think sometimes um, there are certain attitudes that we can take when we're working on our recovery that can be a bit unhelpful. Um, I mean, we've got certain videos about this kind of thing on this channel. So for example, I recently did a video about um, kind of the why me kind of thoughts that you might go around in your head about having OCD itself and how if we hold on to that and dwell on that too much, then it can be quite unhelpful for our OCD recovery. So I'm going to be talking about some of the things that are helpful, some of the attitudes attitudes um, that are helpful to take on when we're on our recovery journey. So the first one I'd just like to mention is um, our attitude that we take towards when we feel like we're having setbacks. I feel like this is an important thing to cover. Um, it can be quite easy when you're doing sort of when you're making progress in your recovery, but you find yourself having a setback or, or a spike or something. It could be very disheartening. Um, and what I wanted to suggest here is that firstly, to strongly advise against beating yourself up if you have had a setback, because OCD recovery is difficult. Um, it's extremely possible, but it takes hard work. And it's almost like it, it's like learning new skills, basically, and learning several new skills at that, not just one. So when we're learning, we're going to make mistakes along the way. And, you know, a lot of it with um, our, our brain is in automatic habits, etc. So we might find ourselves, um, you know, going into accidental rumination or mental checking without even realising. Um, or if we find ourselves kind of getting sucked into a new sort of a theme that we haven't had before. not And then before we realise it, we're kind of sucked into um, full on OCDing again. So, um yeah, what I want to suggest here is not to beat yourself up over the setbacks, but also uh, to view the setbacks as um, part of recovery, basically, a necessary part of recovery, because essentially it's like OCD upping its game. And this is your opportunity to push, bring your recovery to the next level. Um, what it's not helpful to do when you're having a setback is to kind of um, go into like a state of like downing yourself or or feeling like it's so unfair or, you know, getting really up, like sort of almost getting a bit depressed or angry because of the setback, because then you're adding on another layer of difficult emotions on top of already having a setback and feeling anxious. So um, I would suggest that, it's a, you know, a good attitude to take towards setback is to see it as a part of recovery and actually, as I said, a necessary part of recovery. The next thing um, and sort of attitude to take that I wanted to discuss is our attitude towards new triggers as well. Um, so sometimes when you're working on your OCD recovery, maybe you're noticing days when you're having, um, you know, less um, intrusions, whatever that may be, whether it's thoughts, feelings, emotions, urges, um, bodily sensations, whatever it might be, you might be feeling a bit of freedom for a couple of days of feeling like you're doing well. But then somebody may say something to trigger you or you bump into someone that's triggering or a topic comes up on the television that's triggering and it might really annoy you because you're thinking oh I'm doing really well and this trigger comes up and now I just feel like I'm so, you know um but really this trigger is an opportunity it's an opportunity to react in a different way to how you would have reacted before and it's also something to highlight that maybe you need to work on a bit more so when when triggers come up 
um, it, it, like I say, it can be easy to get incredibly frustrated by them, feel almost resentful of them or resentful of the person you might be talking to who's dropped the trigger or, you know, whatever they've said that's triggered you, you know, but completely innocently on their part, probably. Um, but rather than feeling resentful, you know, although it's unpleasant and uncomfortable, the more we kind of try and push away and, you know, feel resentful over that, that discomfort, the more it can end up sticking. And the more we can get used to feeling uncomfortable when kind of raise our tolerance of being discomfort or or you know raise our perceived tolerance of feeling uncomfortable the better so if there's opportunities to feel uncomfortable it's quite good to kind of try and loiter in those opportunities because then you're showing your brain that you're not going to let um you know feelings of discomfort or whatever dictate what you do and don't do so essentially like what i said about setbacks triggers unexpected triggers um are a necessary part of recovery as well and um you know it's really we don't want to be doing avoidance behaviors because that is essentially a compulsion um, which feeds into the ocd cycle um so we start trying to view triggers as an opportunity to react differently so yes they might feel make us feel incredibly uncomfortable but if we can uh, you know avoid asking for perhaps avoid isn't the right word when i've just um said it's compulsion but perhaps if we we can try not to ask for reassurance or confess or research or mentally check or go into rumination after we've been triggered, then we've essentially had a kind of impromptu exposure opportunity. And the more we can prevent the response, the better. Another attitude that it can be useful to take in our recovery, um, but I will kind of mention some other aspects to this as well to be careful of. But, um, it's useful to have um, a degree of gratitude when we're working on our recovery, um, just from a perspective of that it can help us to to um, to reduce how much we might be awfulizing the situation that we find ourselves in with OCD. Because yes, OCD is incredibly difficult and we've suffered a lot with OCD. CD. But it's useful to kind of, if we can reduce our kind of how dreadful we think it is, just slightly, we can reduce our kind of how depressed we might feel about having OCD and our anxiety around having OCD itself. Um, and ways to do that is is being kind of grateful for the the day and age that we live in, where we do have access to the internet, where we can research OCD, um, you know, we can learn about different aspects of um, OCD, how it can kind of trip you up a little bit and what to be careful of and, you know, get some guidance for recovery um, and, you know, tips. We have YouTube, we have social media, which weren't around like, you know, 10, 15 years ago necessarily. I mean, this, 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 this YouTube channel wasn't around when I was at my worst with OCD and I really wish it had been. But what was good is that there were other YouTube channels um, that did help me. Um, and then through Instagram, um, I, I found OCD recovery and I followed other OCD accounts as well. And I learned more about what I was dealing with. So that really, really helped me. So I think there is, it's useful to have, um, a, you know, a slight attitude of gratitude, attitude of gratitude. That's very cringy. Um, to, uh, in terms of, um, you know, that we're able to access some of the resources that we're able to access, um, you know, especially a 100 years ago, people wouldn't have known what they were dealing with. And more than that, you know, God knows what would have happened if people confessed some of the thoughts that they might be having with OCD. That's not, you know, obviously the case now. And we're incredibly lucky. That said, um, although just be careful, um, I, I don't want to sound like I'm trying to um, give a give out toxic positivity because that's not something we want. Don't, don't want to have to force positivity on ourselves. Some days, um, you know, you just feel crap and that's that. And that's the next point I want to move on to in a minute, actually. Um, that's um, in terms of um, we can't, you know, there are some days when we have to just accept not being able to accept. I'll move on to that in a minute. But yeah, just stressing the point of gratitude is really great, but we don't want to be sort of moving into toxic positivity. Um, you know, OCD is is difficult. Um <sighs> It's um, it takes a lot of hard work with recovery and patience, and that can be incredibly frustrating. So um, while it's useful to have, you know, um, you know, a slight attitude of gratitude, 
try not to force it upon yourself if you are really, really, you know, in, in, in having a really bad day. Um, because you do want to be having compassion for yourself, which is a point that I will mention soon. So moving on to the next point that I said about um, some days accepting, not not being able to accept. So um, personally, I found on my recovery journey um, that um, once I started to learn about um, uh, disputing irrational beliefs, which we talk about a lot on this channel, you can view other videos about that. Um, I found it very difficult on some days. Um, I was almost trying to force acceptance upon myself. You know, oh, you know, okay, have you have OCD or whatever. You still got a roof over your head. You know, you still got water to drink and all of that. Um, but really, actually, uh, there were some days where I just had to just stop. You know, okay, I've done I've done my homework that I needed to do for my recovery. I've done my exposures. Um, I've done my exercise, I've eaten well, I feel crap, today I just feel crap and sometimes we have those days um, and it's useful to not get bogged down with that, you know, just accept that you're not, accept you're finding it hard to, you know, if you're just finding it hard on that day to be positive, to uh, to work on acceptance of having OCD and you just feel crap. But that doesn't mean that you're going to feel crap the next day. So don't beat yourself up of that day. You just can't accept it. You just can't accept it. Some days you just can't. But it doesn't mean that you won't have, you know, more oomph about you the next day. And, um, you know, that, and, and that's where sort of the mindful part of it comes in as well, is that, you know, some days are just tougher than other days. It doesn't mean that that feeling is going to last forever. The next day, you might be feeling a bit better or the day after that. And then you've got your strength about you to, you know, kick ass again. And then my kind of last point for attitude for recovery is actually, this won't be my last point. This will be my penultimate point. My second last um, is self-compassion. So with, um, with all of the points that I've mentioned, what really, really is helpful is having compassion for yourself. Like I said, OCD recovery is hard. Um, having gratitude when you're suffering with OCD is hard give your, you know, give yourself the benefit of the doubt there. If you're finding it hard to, to practice gratitude, that's okay as well. You know, keep trying. Um, yeah, just basic, you know, part of unconditional self-acceptance is, is, you know, is having compassion for yourself. It's treating yourself as a worthwhile human being, regardless of, you know, how well you've done that day or anything like that. You know, say if you've had a day, you've been having a difficult day and you haven't managed to get the dishes done, but you've you managed to get a couple of other bits done. Okay, well, that deserves, you know, you deserve a pat on the back for that because it's really difficult. So self-compassion is a really important part um, of, of the mindset that is, is needed for recovery. And self-compassion is is really useful if you've had a slip up as well. So if you found yourself um, doing a compulsion or something like that, rather than dwelling on it and beating yourself up over it and thinking it's game over, um, it's helpful to kind of be compassionate towards yourself, acknowledging that you've been suffering. And if you do that, then you're kind of better to back yourself up to do better the next time because you're almost being like your own kind of cheerleader here. And I know I said that compassion was going to be my last sort of part of um, mindset needed for recovery. But I think what's also really, really important is just don't give up. Basically, it's OCD is frustrating, uncomfortable. It makes you anxious, it makes you feel down, it makes you question yourself. It's really hard. And OCD can interfere with your recovery. It can make you confused about it. It can make you doubt your recovery. All of these things. And, but, but, but. You know, and, and recovery takes time, but don't give up. It's recovery is possible and it can be really easy to just think, oh, F it, I'm giving, I'm, I can't do this anymore because it just feels so frustrating when I'm working on it. But you can sit with those feelings of frustration. You can sit with those feelings of discomfort as you're working on, you know, your exposures, as you're challenging, um, you know, the cognitive side, whatever cognitive model you might be using for your recovery um, in, in terms of what we talk about on this YouTube channel and what I, I used, um, which helped me the most. It was REBT, Challenging Irrational Beliefs. Um, but whatever you're doing there, it just, sit, you know, even if your OCD is shouting at you, still continue doing what you 
need to do and 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 you could reward yourself after by having a chocolate bar that you like or something like that but don't give up even if you've had a really down period and you have had a couple of days of accepting not being able to accept um you can still get back on it and you can still continue in working on your recovery don't give up because it's worth it you know and and you might find that you're sort of in a period of where you're feeling a lot better but not not completely better keep going because it can get better as well um and sometimes you can feel like giving up because you just feel really really tired but think about what's waiting for you on the other side if you just keep at it like it's you know like athletes for example um you know when they're working on their training there'll be some days that are more difficult for them for whatever reasons but the more you keep going and you know you don't give up the better so just um keep you know it's very important to keep the hope there um rob did an excellent video on this channel where he talks about why hope is so important for ocd recovery and i just i think that is such an important point so you know keep going and don't give up hope so i hope these points have been helpful in terms of um what sort of from my point of view the mindset that can be helpful to have when you're working in your ocd recovery essentially they're kind of mindset tips I suppose um you know perspectives to take over certain aspects of recovery but I do hope it has been helpful and as I said if, if there's any videos you'd like to see on this channel please do suggest it in the comments below and we'll see what we can do but thank you very much for watching take care